Okay, we begin our discussion with the species of epilarial worm. So we have here your, what's your Bancrofti. Other name for that is your Bancroft's filarial worms. Again, you get infected by the Wotsuri Bancrofti because of the bite of your Anopheles, Aedes, and we have also your Culex mosquitoes. Then we have here the habitat that try to inhabit here. Adult worm try to inhabit here your lymphatic vessels below your diaphragm. And then the microfilaria could be found in your uh, peripheral blood circulation. Okay, we have here the periodicity for that. This is nocturnal, so they are most likely the microfilaria is present in higher highest concentration during the night time, specifically that's 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. except your Wachuria pacifica. Okay, the Wachuria pacifica, pacifica, the periodicity of that is your subperiodic periodicity. And that one is Pacifica, so it is very prevalent in the Pacific Islands, including the Philippines and Thailand. Okay, for the morphology, so we have here the adult worms. Again, adult worm would have, again, try to follow here our general characteristics of your adult worm, which is creamy white, thread-like, and we'll have here the somatic cells. The somatic cells here, these are adequately spaced, so they are not overlapping with one another, so they are from one my space, from one another. The rectal cell or the genital cell is described here as flat, and the cephalic space, cephalic space is the head part, so medio, the space on the, the head part here is small, so we need to consider this one because that's, this one would differentiate this from your Brugia Malayi because the Brugia Malayi would have a cephalic space which is much bigger compared to your Wasuria Bancrofti. Okay, for the uh, adult male worms, so again, the adult male worms here would have here 2 to 4 centimeter, and for the male, always ang kanilang posterior and tail would be curved with the presence of spicules which are unequal. For the female, on the other hand, it measures 8 to 10 cm with the presence of your paired dalawang genitalia with a vulva found in the pre-equatorial region in the cephalic, uh, in the esophageal region. Sir. Okay, for the microfilaria, so the microfilaria measure 270 to 290 micrometers in diameter. Okay, then... So, you could identify the microfilaria if you have that uh, wet mount preparation of your blood smear. Then, it will identify here the, it try to move, it try to push here the red blood cells. will have a snake, snake-like motility within your blood, within your red cells here in your collected blood. Okay, for the microfilaria, so when stained the nuclei here, the central axis will have here dark staining nuclei. And a nuclear column here made up of two to three rows, okay, in which is conspicuous. Then we have here the curvature of that is graceful. Pag sinabing graceful here, so... Okay, the microfilaria of that is graceful in appearance. Um, I don't know if... Okay, yung drawing ko dito. But then again, um, hindi siya ganun ka... Parang ganun lang. Hindi siya masyado nag... Okay, nag... Uh, what do you call it one? Hindi siya masyado nag-ganyan. So, parang something na ganun lang siya. Uh, we'll, again, we'll differentiate it one with your Brugia Malay later on. Again, we describe the microfilaria of your Wachuria Bancrofti as graceful appearance. Okay, we have your manifestation of your infection caused here by your Wachuria Bancrofti. So, first we have here the lymph adenopathy. Lymph adenopathy is just the inflammation of your lymph nodes because again, it's a parasitism. So, lymph nodes uh, try to trap here the parasite because this one is your secondary lymphoid organ. Another one, lymph adenitis is just um, the inflammation of your lymph nodes. Lymph adenopathy is the swelling. Lymph adenitis is just the inflammation of that. Chyloria, so chyloria is the rupture of your urinary bladder because of the parasite infect infection. And it's characterized here by the 
kay by the presence of the cloudy milky na urine sample. Another one we have lymphangitis. Lymphangitis is the inflammation of your blood vessel. And number five we have your elephantiasis. Again, this is just the enlargement of your um, organs or body, including your extremities, your legs, because of the blockage of your lymphatic vessels. Uh, it's because of the damage in your lymphatic vessels where the lymphatic fluid here try to accumulate in your different extremities. Kasi nag ang ating lymphatic vessels or damage on that. And therefore, naiipon ang mga lymphatic fluids on your extremities kaya lumalaki ang organ. Again, your elephant, yes, this is just manifestation of a chronic infection. Some patient would have infection with this one, do not have fear the elephantiasis. Others would have elephantiasis. Okay, then we have here the laboratory test for you to diagnose the infection. So you could have here your blood smear preparation taken here as either wet mount preparation or dried smear. For the wet mount, like an ideal sample here should be collected on their periodicity. So that's nocturnal. The best time to collect here is 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Okay, for the wet mount, you just have your blood extracted and you add your blood with 2% acetic acid to lyse the red blood cells. And then try to observe here the motile microfilaria which try to move within your bloods, or blood cells. Then the dry smear, so just need to have your thick and a thin smear and then try to stain that one for identification of your microfilaria. To have a better scrutiny of the morphology of that because that's why it's already dry. Another one, we have here the NAS concentration technique. This is just your blood concentration technique. So you have your blood as a sample, then you add here anticoagulant. Okay, then we have also here two drops of your acetic acid, then centrifuge, take the supernatant, then you try to stain for identification of your microfilaria. Another manifestation, we have here your Mayer's. Okay, another manifestation, we have the Mayer and Kowinar syndrome. This is just characterized here by the lymphadenopathy with the splenomegaly with the transient uh, infiltration of pulmonary tract with the hyperusinophilia, increased eosinophilia count. And most likely, this manifestation syndrome here usually occurring on the uh, in non-endemic area. So, we to see you get infected, pero hindi naman ganun ka common an infection in your place. So, you call that manifestation as your mayor in no our syndrome with that characteristic. Lymphadenopathy, splenomegaly, transient pulmonary manifestation, plus we have your eosinophilia for that. Okay, the next one, we have here the Brugia malayi, also called here as your Malayan filariasis. So, we have here the, sub, we have here the periodicity of your Brugia malayi. This one is sub-periodic periodicity. For the vector, again, this includes your Aedes, Anopheles, Mansonia, and we have your Argenetis. For the habitat, again, adult worm, try to inhabit here the lymphatic vessels above your diaphragm. Okay, for adult worms, so we have here the distinguishing characteristics, this one, which just differ here with your uh, what's your urban graph be. So, somatic cell here are overlapping compared kanina dun sa ating uh, was your bank graft, which is uh, adequately space. Then for the rectal, the genital cells here would also be, again, that one would have their um, ovoid compared with your was your bank graft, which is flat, ang kanyang rectal or genital cells. The other one, this would have your bruja appearance because of ang kanyang secondary na curvature. So, ganyan. Okay, for the microfilaria, so this one measures here 177 to 230 micrometer. Okay, this one's much smaller with a microfilaria found here on your Worcester Bank Rocky. And we have your secondary curvature appearance, making that one as appearing to be a kinky appearance. So, parang ganyan. Isang ganyan, tapos mag isa pa siyang ganyan. Making that one as secondary curvature so that would describe this one as a kinky appearance unlike in your what's your brain craft that one graceful appearance kasi wala siyang ganyan lang siya diba? parang ganyan lang wala na siyang another nga ganyan 
Wala siyang secondary na curvature. So, we have here the differentiation, differentiating characteristics between your Brugge-Malay with your Bancrofty. So, we have the table for that. So, we have here the adult worms, almost pareho sila, 2 to 4 cm for the male, for the females, 8 to 10 cm. They are differentiated away by their cephalic space and their head part for the adult worm, which are bankrupty, would have here smaller in a cephalic space. Brugia Malay would have here much wider, bigger in a cephalic space. And then some other cells again here in your what's your bankrupty, they are uh, the greatly space, they are not overlapping. Brugia Malay would have an overlapping na somatic cells. And another differentiation here, both of them would have here a sheath, they are sheathed na tail end. Only that, they just differ with the presence or the absence of the terminal nuclei. So notice here, this is your watcher by Crafty. Wala siyang nucleus here up to the tip part. So uh, hanggang dito lang, wala, wala ka na makita dito sa end part. Unlike in your Brugia Malay, you would have here the appearance of your two terminal nuclei. May makita kang dalawa dito on the terminal end. Okay. Another differentiation would be the graceful appearance of the microfilaria of your watcher by Crafty and the kinky appearance of your Brugia Malay. And then we have here the habitat of the vectors for your watcher by Crafty and Brugia Malay. Again, you can find the mosquito vector here could be found in banana plantation and also be found in the swamps. Now we go to the next one. We have here the Loa Loa. Okay, the Loa Loa, other name for that is your eye worm. Again, this is your, this is the only diurnal periodicity. So, again, that's why we have your high concentration during the 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay, for the vector, it transmitted here by the bite of your chrysops. That's your deer fly, your mango fly. And try to cause here your calabar swelling, your fugitive swelling, also called here as your bang eye. Okay, for the adult worms, so adult worms still follow here the, the usual characteristics of our filarial worms, which are thread-like, they are creamy white, and would have here the urinal periodicity. For the adult males, so the 3 to 3.4 cm in length, that one would have here the curve for your end tail and the presence of your spicules, which are unequal, the long spicules. Adult female another hand measures 5 to 7 cm in long with the vulva opening on the cervical region. The microfilaria of your loa loa measure here 260 to 500 micrometer. And just like your Bosuria Bancrofty, Brugimalai, this is also sheathed. Only that, ang kanyang nuclei hanggang sa tip part. Again, we are watching Bancroft T, ang kanyang nuclei, hindi umaabot sa tail end. Whereas your um, Brugia Malay, meron kang dalawang terminal nuclei. But in the case of your Loa Loa, again, the nuclei extending up to the tail end. But then, all three of them are all sheeted pa rin silang lahat. Okay, we have here the disease pathology related to your lower low infection. So first one, we have here the troublesome or the awkwardness as you try to feel here the parasite try to migrate. Especially if you try to cross here the bridge of your nose. You could, you could feel that there's a moving na, uh, na worm on that area. If you try to affect your eyes, basically it results here to your eye irritation. Or worse, it could result here to the blindness. Then we have here the term calabar swelling or the fugitive swelling. Again, this is just allergic reaction. It's a transient uh, parietic itchiness, inflammation, primarily infecting or affecting here the arms or the orbit of the eyes. So, sobrang katin niya, lumalaki, nagsiswell siya. It could go as big as the hen's egg. Okay, that's your calabar fugitive swelling. Okay, now we have here the laboratory diagnosis. So, for identification of your worms, so you could have your surgical removal of the worm in the eyes. Okay, then you could have also here the blood, you could examine the blood, collect the blood for your both your um, thick and thin smear. 
But then again, so try to collect the blood during the daytime because this one is the urinal. Serological testing would also help here for to diagnose the disease by identification specific antigen antibody reaction. So example for that, we have your intracutaneous. You can also have here your complement fixation test. And for the CBC, then you increase to, uh, expect to have here the uh, differential count in your CBC would have high concentration of eosinophils. Okay, that's your eosinophilia because again, this is just a parasitic infection, just like the other parasitic infection.